Hey YouTube, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video and in this video, we are going to talk about JSON. I'll try to cover almost everything about JSON in this single video and to get the most out of this video, although you don't need to be a pro coder, but still, you should have some programming experience. I'm actually planning to roll out a couple of videos about web APIs even in Node.js and in Flutter, so I thought it would be better to first give an insight about JSON. Now talking about JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, it is a lightweight data interchange format which is easy for us, that is humans, to read and write and also is easy for machines to parse and generate. JSON has almost replaced XML from the market and there are other alternatives from JSON too like YAML. JSON ain't a programming language, first of all, it's just a text storing format. You can use JSON for almost all the modern web APIs, you can see it being used in almost all of them and also it's used widely for storing configuration data such as our VS Code settings itself. Now in this video, I'm going to use Node.js which is essentially JavaScript and also Python to parse and work with JSON data. So just as you can see, I have an index.js file which is JavaScript, I have a data.json which contains some JSON data and I have a Python file where we are going to write our code regarding such things. But before we proceed, let me clarify one thing that JSON ain't exactly a text file format. It is more like a data representation format. In simple words, if I say, then we don't always need a JSON file to work with JSON data. Anyway, let's just escape all this talk and let's take a look at the code. So talking about JSON and let's just not pay attention to this data that we have right now. Although JSON ain't a programming language, but there are certain kind of data that JSON can process. So if you're going to insert some data in your JSON file, then it should either be a string such as this or a number or a JSON object such as this or an array. It can even be a boolean like this and it can even be a null value. But other than this, you can't put any other data in your JSON files. Now to work with JSON using any programming language or a text stack, all that you need to know is how to parse JSON in that programming language. That is how to convert this data into a native data type of that programming language. For example, I have this simple data.json file. Let me just copy this object and let me just delete all of this. And now this is a simple JSON object. It contains some key value pair, user ID, ID, title and completed. Now all that I have to do is to parse this JSON data in my index.js file. Now, since JSON itself stands for JavaScript Object Notation, it's actually very easy to parse JSON and use it with JavaScript. With Node.js, if you want to parse JSON, all that you have to do is to assign some variable and then even when you require that JSON file, it's going to be automatically parsed. So just as I required this, if I try to log JSON data and now here in my terminal, all that I have to say is node space index.js and if I save this, if I run this again, you can see this gives me some JSON data. Things become interesting when I try to show you the type of this data and this is an object. Now this is the point where you have to pay some attention. Now the object is something that's a native data type of JavaScript while JSON, this too is a JSON object but here it's a native JavaScript object. So now if I get, if I have to get any data out of this I can just interpret, I can just look at it like a simple JS object. So now if I want to get the value of completed, all that I have to say is JSON data dot completed, save it, run it again. And here we have false, easy peasy. Now to use the same JSON in Python, all that we have to do is we have to import this JSON module that comes with Python by default. Then we have to say with open our file path as F, we load, we use the JSON dot load method to load the data from the file which will essentially parse it and then we are saving it in data variable and I will just print the data. Let's save it, let's go back to our terminal and let's run this. Now you can see that we have this simple data which is essentially our JSON data. But thing will become more interesting if I just try to print the type of this data and now it's going to be a dictionary. So here is the thing. JSON is an object like right here this JSON data is an object but you don't have to worry about that. All that you have to worry about is to parse the JSON so that it can be converted in a native data type of your programming language which is dictionary in Python 
and object in JavaScript. So now here, if I have to, let's say, print the title of this task, all that I have to say is data dot title. But it's not going to work. Why? Because this is not how you interpret dictionaries in Python. Although to work with objects in, Java, in JavaScript, we use this same simple syntax. So what most people think is that it's same parsing JSON in all the programming languages, but it's actually not in Python. All that I have to say is data. And then we have to index the title using this method. And now if we run this, you can see we get the same title. We get the same task as we have. Let's go back here and let's actually grab a couple of more tasks. And now this is going to be a JSON array. So we simply have an array. In that array, we are going to have multiple JSON objects. So now I have three tasks. If I again run the same code in my JavaScript, I'm going to get undefined. That's okay. If I run here, I'm going to get some error. Why? Now we have an array. So in my index.js, I don't have to say JSON data dot complete. If I just say JSON data, I'll get the entire data. If I say the type of data now see things are going to get interesting right here it's not going to be an array it's a still an object because in javascript we can even look at this as an object we can manipulate it and we can access the data but let's go to python and now here i have loaded this json data in my data and now if i just print the type of this data then this is going to be an array it's not going to be a list so just as I said, when you parse JSON, it gets converted into a native data type of that particular particular programming language. And all the data is just stored in that particular variable with that data type. So now that we know it's a list, if I have to access, let's say the second ID's title, all that I have to do is that I have to say, first go to the second index, which is in city first, because it's going to be zero and one. And now in the first, you know, in the, in the element at the first place, we need the title. So here I have to say in the first place element, I need the title. Let's save it. Let's run it again. And here we have the output, which is essentially the same as this one. And in, in the index.js, if I have to say something like that, all that I have to do is that I have to say JSON data, go to first index and here I need the title and this will again give me the same output as this one so essentially same as this but again just as i said we don't always need a json file to store json data we can even store json data in simple variables and work with that in javascript let's have to store some json data i can say this var data is equal to and this can simply be like this like if i have to store this single particular object i can just store it as it is in javascript and it's not going to give any error which is why mostly we say that it's easy to interpret JSON with JavaScript. And maybe this is a reason why Node.js is a very popular framework for API development. But if I have to do the same with Python, I can't do it in that way because Python is going to give me errors. So in Python, let's say if I have a data which is going to contain some JSON. So I can say that in this string, now this is going to be a JSON. I'm going to have some name, which again is going to give issues because JSON can't contain single string. So let's say that our Python is going to have them in single string. I have a name. It's going to be prints and I'm putting the ID value to four. Let's just save it. Let's just comment this out and let's just print the data. Now here, when we print this, it's going to be a simple string. Let me just show you the type of the data. So now it's going to be a single string. So what this means is that here I can say something like data and then if i try to index the name you're actually going to get error because obviously we can't slice our strings so to do that all that we have to do is that we have to again parse this data in our python which is not the case in javascript because json fits pretty well with javascript anyway in python i have to parse this so i can say some json data is equal to json dot load and i have to load this data right here and now if i try to print json data let me just save it let's just run it okay we are going to get error it should be loads and now we are going to get this value now this is a json data if i try to get the name i can simply get the name which is prince so 
I think that's pretty much it from my side in this video. All that I had to speak in this video is that JSON is a simple text representation format. You don't always need a file to store JSON. And if you have to work with JSON in any programming language, all that you have to find out is a way to parse JSON in that programming language. I won't spend too much time talking about encoding and decoding data because that's what we are going to cover in our not API tutorials. But till then, keep coding, keep loving, keep sharing and peace.